the previous video we talked about how you can represent your ground truth vector to your artificial neural network and the answer was multi-hut encoding vector. In this video we're gonna be looking at how you can compute your loss given your y-hat and your ground truth vector for a multi-label classification. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Don. So, so far on our list we have gone, come a long way, right? So, so far we've talked about all of these uh, three elements including the ground truth vector representation. In this video we're going to be talking about this four, uh, well the fifth element, which is artificial neural networks for multi-label classification, the loss function, right? So again let's look at our neural network, right? So again, uh, like, like before, uh, you've got your four class labels here. Um, let's say your class labels are, let's say what? Uh, again, let's say we have dog, a duck, let's say a horse, and let's say a tiger. So the job is given an input image, how many of these uh, images are present or how many of these animals are present in this image, right? So this is the input that input image that you know is fed into your neural network, and within the neural network, like before, you have many, many, many connections, many, many, many connections, right? So that's not what we worry about at the moment. You've got your output uh, layer where you've got your sigmoid functions, and we said that each one of these output a value between. Uh, 0 and 1 and we said that we're gonna call that f a vector that output vector as we're gonna call it y hat um, So let's say you've got values like uh, let's say uh, you've got values like 0 0.9 uh, 0 0.8 point 0.1 and 0.2 right and we also talked about the ground truth vector right where in this case your ground truth vector is let's say let's just say one one zero zero right meaning that your input data belongs to class dog and class duck and it does not belong to horse and tiger and you can see that the y hat is pretty good very high values for class one and two and low values for class uh three and four which is which are horse and tiger right now how can you actually compute your loss function? So we have seen in one of our earlier videos that uh, when you use a sigmoid function um, for multi-label classification, effectively you are turning this guy, like each one of these elements individually, into a binary classification problem, right? So each one should be treated as a binary classification problem, right? So for a binary classification problem, we know how to measure the difference between your... Uh, actually, I made a mistake here. This guy is not Y hat, it's Y. My apologies for that. Uh, so that is your ground truth vector, okay? Now, so we've seen how you can measure the difference between uh, your y, your ground truth, and your predictions y hat. And the answer always was binary cross entropy error function. The binary cross entropy error function, right? So let me just write it maybe like, like this, b, c, e, right? So what you do is you, met, you use binary cross entropy function to, to compute the difference between each corresponding two elements between your uh, in your y hat vector and your y vector meaning that you compute the difference between uh, 0 0.9 and 1 and then you compute the uh, the difference or the distance between these two between these two and between these two right so you get these four elements in your ground truth sorry in your error vector right so you get let's call this e1 these are just these are going to be values, right? Error 3, error 4, and then uh, typically what, what you can do, you can actually average these together, like E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4 divided by 4, which is the number of elements in your, uh, in your, um, in your neural network or in your error vector, 
right? So the total error for this input data, remember, you still have one input data, okay? For, for that input data, you could say that the error is actually nothing but the summation of all of your error elements in your error vector uh, from for one to four divided by the number of classes that is four, right? So EI, I goes from one to four, basically, right? Um, and that becomes your error for, for the multi-label classification task of your neural network for only this image, right? And later on, if you have more than one image in your mini bash, for example, you compute for each input data, you compute this error, and then eventually you can average these errors uh, across your mini batch and that would be the error corresponding to your mini batch. Actually, just so we're clear on a last note about binary cross-entropy function, so this guy is your binary cross-entropy function, right? Nothing really magical here. Y is your ground truth and P is your, your prediction, the same as Y hat that we have here, okay? So this measures the difference between uh, your prediction and your ground truth. I have actually a very nice video on how binary cross-entropy came into being. Uh, you can see the link somewhere um, up here somewhere, right? In the next video, we will do a forward pass in a neural network and compute binary cross-entropy across all the elements of your prediction and then do a backward pass through the final layer of your neural network just so you can feel comfortable about forward pass and backward pass at least in the final layer of your neural network for multi-label classification. I see you in the next one.